Now, if you've been to any major retailer, you know that fall and Halloween, and in some places, Christmas is already starting to hit the sales floor. I am here for it. This was my favorite DIY season, so I pulled together a compilation video of some of my favorite fall DIYs of all times, and it may have given you a little sneak peek into some Halloween and maybe even some Christmas. All right, guys, let's get started. And for project number one, I'm going to use two of these wooden trinket boxes from Dollar Tree, as well as two of these wooden stems that were also from Dollar Tree. The first thing I did was take my boxes outside and I'm just going to spray paint them with this rustic orange spray paint from Rust-Oleum. This is probably my favorite paint to work with. You could certainly use chalk paint or an acrylic paint, totally up to you. The next thing I did was take my boxes inside and I am just going to glue the wooden stems right on top of them. And uh, I'm just using an all-purpose glue by Shore Bonder. This worked perfectly fine. You could also use wood glue if you didn't want to use your hot glue gun. Either one will work perfectly fine. Then I'm going to take these little leaves that were left over from a Dollar Tree floral project that I had been working on on an earlier project. I'm going to add a little bit more glue down to this guy and just kind of smush him in the corner there, just giving it that leaf effect. And then I'm going to do the same exact thing for that leaf on the other side. Once those leaves were dried and in place, I wanted to add a little bit of pizzazz, I guess. So I'm going to add some bows with this green twine. This green time twine, I did pick up on Amazon. And uh, I'm having trouble saying the word twine. And uh, I just put it in the corner there. I don't know. It kind of felt like it was like a almost like a cute little headband or something on that uh, jack-o'-lantern. So once I repeated it on the other side again, I thought that these were just so adorable. I could easily see how you could use these for your fall decor. You could easily transition these into Halloween decor as well. I think that they'd also be very, very cute with a battery-operated tea light inside of them. I'm really obsessed with them. I think that this is probably my favorite so far. The next project, I'm going to be using this grapevine wreath form that's in the shape of a pumpkin. I picked this up at Hobby Lobby. I think it might have been from Michael's. You could also use the Dollar Tree pumpkin wreath form. That gather sign is from 99 cent only. And um, that's, that's one of those signs that I picked up when I did a shopping haul in Los Angeles a couple months ago. I think it actually, I think it was last month. So just a couple coats of my rustic orange spray paint once again on that gather sign. And uh, once that were, while that was drying, I'm taking my floral picks. Now, some of these came from Michael's, some of them from Hobby Lobby, and I think some of them were from Dollar Tree. So I kind of just grabbed a, a mix here from my stash that I had at home. And to uh, get all of these adhered to that wreath form, I'm actually going to use twine. I'm going to use twine and just simply tie these on there. What's so great about that is that you can go back through and cut the twine off and put different florals on it. You could make it a little more scary or a little more creepy, maybe for Halloween. You could make it more fall festive. You could make it, you know, winter. You could do a lot of different things with it. And it's a great way to kind of preserve your, uh, you know, your, your, gosh, any of your wire wreath forms or your grapevine wreath forms, really any of them. And the picks are so great because they're already put together. I do kind of fluff them a little bit and, you know, they've got wiring and different things in them. So it's pretty easy to manipulate them and kind of tie them and bend them and get them in the right area. I was going to say the bend and snap them, but uh, if you... If you, if you ever watch Legally Blonde, then you know you know where the bend and snap comes from. But uh, again, I'm just taking my picks here, and I'm literally just kind of assembling them around. I will trim down any of these really super long stems if I need to. and uh, But once again, I'm not doing much at all to these, and it is really, really cool. Now, I will say that I wish I had two more of these larger uh, stems from uh, either Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I forget which one they came from because it's kind of off-centered a little bit, I feel like, just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead in with some Dollar Tree picks and just kind of, you know, fluff it up a little bit and just try to kind of 
get some balance going on there. Now, once I had the picks and everything all tied into place, then it was time to add the gather sign. Now, for the gather sign, I did go ahead and add some hot glue to that. And the gather sign is actually made out of a pressed cardboard, so it adhered really nicely to the grapevine wreath. It didn't, I didn't have any problems at all getting that to stick there. And then once I had that done and it was set and it was dried, I loved the way this looked, especially against my yellow door. I think that this is a great way to kind of kick off the fall season and get ready for everything fall DIYs. And uh, I don't know, I think that I might end up redressing this one up for Halloween and uh, kind of carrying it a little bit longer than just kind of fall. Now this last DIY is actually going to be really, really easy. First thing I'd grab were uh, four letters that spelled out the word fall. I did grab these from Michaels. I also have these frames here that are the five by seven size. And then I grabbed some fall-esque scrapbook paper or um, yeah, scrapbook paper that I did pick up at Michaels. The frames, by the way, did come from Dollar Tree. So this is easy, easy, easy to replicate. So the first thing I'm going to do is take all of this plastic and all of this jazz off of here. And uh, I am going to remove that insert that's inside the frame there and uh, get these ready to start DIYing with. I'm, I am going to go ahead and pause for a second. I'm going to take my letters outside. I'm going to spray paint them again, my favorite paint, and uh, use the Rust-Oleum just flat black matte spray paint here on the letters itself. I did go ahead and kind of do some light coats, and then I went back in and did a second coat on these. They turned out really well. With the way the sun and everything is shining on this, it almost looks like that they're metal, but trust me, they're black. You'll see that once they're all done with the uh, complete completed DIY. Don't you love the shadow there of my hand over top of everything? <laughs> All right. So once everything had dried, it was time to go inside and start working on the actual scrapbook sheets themselves. Now, what I did was I found two different uh, scrapbook pages that I liked that kind of complemented each other. I took the inserts of the frame and then just put them um, kind of where I thought I might like to, uh, you know, use that pattern. And then I'm just going to trace it with a pencil here. I'm just using a colored pencil. And then I'm going to take that pair, pair of scissors. And uh, I don't know why I said that pair of scissors, because you still see me tracing here. But uh, after I've traced around the frame, and then uh, after I've got everything all set up, I am then going to cut with my scissors. Now I'm going to have two frames that are going to have this particular pattern. And then I'm going to have two frames that have the other pattern with them as well. So I'm going to go ahead, cut these out, get these ready to go and set up my frames. And I'm going to have two frames with the kind of a plaidish pattern. And then I'm going to have two frames that have the larger leaf patterns. Now, once those are all dressed and ready to go, it's very simple to just kind of add your sheets of paper. Now I am putting the scrapbook paper in the frame and I'm putting the glass back in the frame as well because those letters that we were working on outside, we're actually going to be gluing those to the outside of the frame. So now that I've got all of my scrapbook paper ready to go, you can see here kind of what we're going for. Now I do want to connect all of these frames and I'm gonna connect these um, kind of in a different way. I didn't have any little hinges or anything. So what I'm going to do is kind of trying to stand them up end to end here and um, kind of make them uh, almost like an accordion, I guess. So I'm going to use two of my larger pillar candles to kind of keep them in place. And then I'm going to take a piece of nautical rope and I'm going to separate it into three pieces. So once I have my three individual pieces, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of move my candles out a little bit to kind of, you know, let it collapse like that there. And then I'm going to stand them up again and get them at a point where um, they are almost like a 90 degree angle, I think is kind of what I'm going for. And I am going to go ahead and just add a very generous amount of hot glue 
right down the center of that. Now, trying to get most of it on the sides versus in the crease there. Then I'm going to take my piece of nautical rope and I'm just going to place it down in the crack there or in the V kind of shape where I added all of that hot glue. And uh, I am going to go ahead and spread this out just a little bit more, kind of make it more of a 90 degree angle. And then once that glue has hardened, I will go ahead and stand that up, let it dry a little bit more. And then I'm going to repeat the process on the other two frames as well. Now for this particular one, of course, here I run out of my hot glue, so I have to add my hot glue back. So once I've got that going, um, then you will see me add another piece of rope. We're going to just repeat this process and then I'm going to join the four frames together, making them eight frames in that same kind of uh, accordion pattern, if you will. So hopefully that's making sense and uh, you're not thinking I've totally lost my mind right now. Um, once this is all set up and dried again, now you'll see where I do kind of join them back together again. And the idea here is that that these are going to kind of keep in that uh, zigzaggy or kind of that accordion way. And here again, just kind of doing that same exact motion, adding some glue in there, and then adding another piece of my nautical rope in there just to kind of go ahead and uh, keep this process. And then once you've got everything dried, now it's going to look like this here. Now, I played around with the formation of my paper, and I kind of liked having the two leaf patterns in the middle and then the two on the outside. Now, the next part, unfortunately, I was a bonehead and didn't film, but all I did was just glue my letters right on top of the glass. And as you can see here, it creates such a cool, cute little fall decor. I think it would be really, really cute to add some twigs and maybe make some little stems or something on top of each one of these frames. I thought that this was super, super cute. And imagine all of the ways that you could customize this for your own family. I even think you could put family photos or something behind this too. I think it could be really, really cute. And there's a lot of really fun DIY ideas that you could do using this very exact same concept for some of your own projects. I'm gonna take a sheet of this peat moss or this moss that I picked up from Dollar Tree and also one of these birdhouses. Now, my moss sheet here is a little bit shorter than normal, but um, I trimmed it down. So I used it for another project. Take some of your hot glue and add a fairly generous amount of hot glue to your metal sign here or your metal uh, birdhouse. And uh, you're going to want to do this fairly quickly. So make sure that your sheet moss piece is kind of already about the same size as your project, kind of like I had here. Um, totally just locked up here, by the way. I used some moss for another project and this was what was left over. So once everything is dried, you're gonna have something that kind of looks like this. Flip it over on the back side, and then just grab a pair of scissors and start to trim it away. And you are just going to um, kind of reshape your metal birdhouse. And uh, I'm gonna do this with a very long pair of scissors. I would recommend maybe going with a smaller pair because as uh, you'll see here, when I started to trim down onto those edges there, where the, um, I guess the eave of the house is, it was a little awkward getting my scissors in there, but uh, never fail. I did manage to figure it out and get it all trimmed out. Now that it's all trimmed out, I am going to start working on that centerpiece. And to do that, I'm just gonna poke a hole in the middle and then just cut some kind of lines towards the center or the edges of the circle there and then just go around with my extra large scissors once again and uh, just cut out the center piece there and once that part is all done then I'm going to take a some uh, ribbon I have this ribbon that I picked up from Hobby Lobby and uh, I loved the way it looked I'm just going to tie it in a very, very simple bow and just glue it at the top and you've got the cutest little accessory for a tiered tray and speaking of trays, I have this home sweet home tray that I really do like. I picked it up for $3.99 at the 99 cent only store. And um, I want to make it a little more fallish. So to do that, I'm going to take a sheet of this scrapbook paper. Now, my scrapbook paper happens to be about the same size as the bottom of my tray, which is great. So I'm going to go ahead and just line it up here and make sure that I've got the edges um, that I don't have any of the edges of that tray falling off of there. 
And um, I am going to just take a pen and just trace around the tray with a circle. And um, then I'm going to take a pair of scissors and just cut it out. I'm going to cut it out to the kind of the what I what I traced around the bottom of the tray. But I will have to end up trimming it up just a little bit more to get it to fit within the circle itself. So once you've got that part done, you have a couple options here. You could make this permanent or you could um, make it uh, not permanent. Um, <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say here. But, uh, you know, the cool thing about this technique is that you can really make your trays kind of work for whatever season. So if you have a favorite tray that you want to use, this is a simple way to just kind of decorate or add that tray or make it a little special. You could use fabric. You could use contact paper if you wanted to even. And uh, I just love the way that this looks. And it's going to be a nice addition to my fall decor. And speaking of all things fall decor, I'm going to make a lantern. I'm going to take one of these snakes. This is that Dollar Tree snake that you can find in Crafter Square. And I cut the head off and I cut the tail off. Now I've got two Dollar Tree signs that are about the same size. And then I also grabbed a package of the tall, longer dowel rods from Dollar Tree. Now for my snake, um, it's not very even right here. And I'm trying to even it out. The scissors weren't really working great. So I'm going to take my lineman pliers and I'm just going to snip off some of that extra wood just to try to get that as smooth as possible. And then I'm going to take a very sharp pair of scissors and just kind of go through there and just kind of trim that up and make that edges or the two edges of the um, snake as flat as possible so they will stick to the top of the lantern that I'm going to be making here. I know with this idea, I'm not reinventing the wheel here. I know that a lot of us have done these types of lanterns before, but they're so easy to make. And they're also great for decor, especially for fall. There's something about the lanterns that I love. I'm just taking my two cardboard signs and I'm going to go ahead and glue the sticks in the four corners. Now, I did not trim these sticks down at all. I wanted this to be kind of tall because I've got a very cool plan for the inside of it. So go ahead and just take your hot glue add your stick in the corner. I kind of roll my stick just a little bit. That way I make sure that I've got glue kind of on all sides of that. And then uh, as you finished your four, go ahead and let those dry. Um, I do let them set up. The great thing about using hot glue is that they will set up really, really quickly. If you are in a warmer client, you might, or a climate, <laughs> you might want to use um, like an E6000 or something that is going to be more durable for, you know, being outside. Hot glue will melt. And then I just added the top part of it and uh, created this kind of lantern. Now, I really do love the way this looks. I even like the way it looks, honestly, with the signs that are up there on the top. I think that that's super cute, and you could definitely make something with this. Um, I'm going to take now my handle, which formerly was known as Mr. Snake, and uh, I'm going to do a real awkward camera angle there. What was that? Sorry about that, guys. And then I'm just going to add my uh, snake or my handle right to the top of my lantern kind of like so. Now I did add a fairly generous amount of the hot glue on either side of this and I just made sure to hold that in place until it set up nice and firm and um, it was going to be, um, you know, it was going to be sturdy. Now this is not going to be a lantern that, you know, you're going to want to walk around the neighborhood with and, you know, do a Paul Revere kind of thing with it. You're going to want to have this handle be decorative only. So after it's all set up, then I took it outside to spray paint it. I used a Rust-Oleum um, Burnt Orange, I think is what this one is called. And uh, I love the way this looks. This is my favorite color to use for fall. I think it's super transitional for not only Halloween, but also for fall decor. And uh, I am going to give this two coats. And I did this two coats um, I let it dry. I let it dry really, really good before I did the second coat. That way I was sure to get maximum coverage on everything. Uh, there's a lot of little nooks and crannies with this, and you want to make sure that you're getting all of those pieces and wood pieces and interiors and exteriors and all that jazz painted and covered and looking nice and orange and beautiful. 
And then for this next part, it is all dry and beautiful and ready to go. I have some Dollar Tree floral picks here. I love floral picks. They are my absolute new favorite thing to work with. You can use them for so many things, but because I've only got two, I also grabbed some of this extra greenery that I had from my stash. Now, for my clippers here, these are lineman pliers. I use this tool probably more than anything. Also, I've got some height here, so I'm going to take one of these Dollar Tree candle holders. Now, if I could uh, find an all-white one, I probably would have done that. I thought about spray painting it, but honestly, um, I'm not going to have to. I'm going to cover it up. This is a battery-operated tea light that is also from Dollar Tree. It's not a tea light. It's a pillar candle that's also from Dollar Tree, and I love the height that is in there. Now, for the floral picks, all we're going to do is just take those and just kind of start bending them. Um... I'm bending them really so they can wrap around the candle base and, uh, you know, kind of fluffing up the flowers and the pine cones and the leaves and the little berries and everything that you see. And then all I'm going to do is just literally take it and just place it around the candle holder kind of like so. That's why I was saying like that navy blue base that you saw. It doesn't really matter because you're not going to see it when it's all done. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the other pick as well. And uh, I'm just going to bend it again kind of putting it on the opposite side of the other candle holder, playing around with those leaves and pine cones and the pumpkins and the berry things and, you know, fluffing it up a little bit. But because I've only got two picks here, it's not going to be enough. That's where the other florals and other pumpkins come in. Um, if you want to recreate this, I would recommend maybe getting four picks if you could. You could probably get away with doing it with three picks. But I really like the way that the four picks or the, the, the fullness of it all really looks when it's all done. So now we're going to go rapid fire here and speed this up and... Um, Again, I'm just adding in some different florals. I'm using my um, lineman pliers there because you can clip through those wires so easily. And uh, I'm just kind of taking various size stems and playing around with it and, you know, plucking a pumpkin off and uh, playing around with some leaves and just kind of filling in the gaps in the areas there. And uh, you'll see that I'll also take these orange flowers. By the way, watch this action. Take all your leaves push it forward, get them out of your way, take your lineman pliers, bam, one cut, everything is done. I'm telling you, those are the best tools to have in your DIY arsenal. Now, here's where I'm kind of taking those orange flowers and kind of mixing them in around with the picks and other things, just to give everything a very cohesive look. I don't want it to just have the one, you know, full picks on the one sides and then have it kind of be looking kind of empty and, and scraggly on the other side. So once this is all done, this is how the lantern looks. I think this is so, so cute. I love the way this looks. And when you add it to a tray, like the tray that we made, and you add your birdhouse and some other little accessories. By the way, don't you love that little tiny scale? I got that from a friend of mine. That is in Canada. She sent me a little surprise gift package, and this was one of the things in there, and I love this scale so much. I'm going to be able to use it on my trays and tiered trays, and I was just thrilled with it. So you know who you are. Thank you very much for sending me that. I appreciate it. I think this is the best part about this video today. You've literally got everything that you need to create an entire fall piece of decor. This is something that you could put on your coffee table. You could put this in your kitchen. It could go on a coffee bar. There's a lot of really, really cool things that you can do it. And I love the way that this turned out. My next DIY is going to incorporate these two MDF rings that I picked up from Hobby Lobby and also this oversized bag of potpourri that had all these great gourds and pine cones and all this great stuff in it. Now for my two rings here, I'm going to first glue those together. I'm just using some Shorebonder wood glue. I figured with the MDF that would actually be really good and hold these in place where I needed to, them to kind of stay. But I'm also going to go through with some electrical tape and just wrap that around the two rings where I did add that hot glue. That way everything is nice and secure and I have a really good strong bond before I start making my wreath. 
Now, once I had those two rings secured, it was time to start decorating those rings. To do that potpourri, I am going to just use this Dollar Tree bucket, and I literally just empty the potpourri and the contents inside of there. As you will see, this potpourri has all kinds of great little things in there. Not only are there leaves and different colored pine cones, but there's little pumpkins, there's orange slices, there's cinnamon sticks, there's wood slices, and uh, there's a really a lot of cool variation. And I wanted to be able to just kind of lay everything out and really see how everything is going to be. Now, I just literally started adding pine cones to this. Now, the uh, pine cones at first, after I kind of laid it out and played with it, I thought that it probably should have a base of some leaves or something first so i went to my stash i grabbed two packages of these dollar tree leaves and then i started kind of separating the leaves from the floral stems themselves and then uh, trimming them down and then literally adding those leaves to the two rings trying to keep the integrity of the two rings and making sure that you can see the two rings but um, kind of covering them up with a woodland feel if you will with those leaves and then once everything was done then I went back through and I started adding my pine cones and my gourds and everything until I had a project that looked like this now I'm almost done with this one the next thing i'm going to do is then just add a simple bow i grabbed this one from amazon because you guys know i'm not too great at making bows sometimes and uh I'm really, really happy with the way that this looks. You could certainly reposition it if you wanted to. You could put that bow on the left side of the wreath and have your rings kind of shooting out. But either way, super, super happy with the way that this one turned out. And for my next DIY, I'm going to be taking one of these wood grain chargers that I picked up from Dollar Tree and this oversized deer head stencil from Hobby Lobby, as well as some Waverly ink chalk paint. For the stencil itself, I'm just going to tape this over top of the, or on top of the tray. My original idea was that this was going to lay much, much flatter because I thought that I'd be able to take my heat gun out and kind of manipulate or manipulate the, um, the stencil. But unfortunately what happened was you can see it starting to curl there in the upper right hand corner. The heat gun was just way too hot for it. So after I took the heat away, um, then I just simply used some masking tape and just made sure that when I was using my stenciling brush, I was just going in up and down motions versus going left to right. That way it does help keep some of the stencil intact and uh, doesn't get all over the place. Now, when it was done, I simply added some of these floral picks that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. I did think it needed a little bit of something. I didn't want to add a bow to it because I love the pumpkin detail that I did in the middle. So I took this nautical rope and I'm using that as an outline on my tray wreath. That way, um, I'm hopefully giving everybody something that they love and something that's super easy to make. And uh, again, I'm pretty happy with this one. Now, my last DIY is actually going to incorporate some of these projects from last year that I never actually ended up using. I'm also going to be using some of this scrapbook paper that you see behind me. I'm going to take a sheet of sandpaper from Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to be sanding away until all of the jewelry is gone. And then for the actual DIY itself, I'm going to go ahead and just trace around the end of it. And the reason why I'm doing that is because this is going to be a very simple cut. It's not going to be something that's super complicated. If you wanted to paint your pumpkins, by all means, go for it. I don't think it's necessary. I am just literally going right on the brown lines and cutting these away. Just, um, it's literally that simple. Now I'm going to take some Mod Podge and I'm just going to put a nice thick coating of it on my pumpkin here and once I have that done I've just glued individual sheets and everything is complete now for the bow at the top I didn't want to reuse the previous kind of raffia bow I thought these there this twine rather was so much better so it created several of these little bow ties and I am just going to add a dot of glue right at the top of the stem and just glue each one of those little bow ties into place I am obsessed with these I love these so much um, I did glue my three blocks together but you could certainly keep them separate if you wanted to I thought originally 
I was going to make a sign that said like fall or something like that. But I kind of like the simplicity of these, honestly. I love the patterns, first of all. I love the color combination, and uh, it was all included in this larger bundle of great plaids and ginghams. But anyway, this is what it looks like on my bookshelf. I really, really am happy with these. We're going to use a set of these small spoons that I picked up from Hobby Lobby instead of these scoops that I picked up at Hobby Lobby and also this very small cutting board from Hobby Lobby. I also grabbed some of these glitter stickers from Hobby Lobby. Now, you could easily replicate this type of project using very similar Dollar Tree supplies. You could even go into the um, pantry or the uh, party department, not the pantry department, and grab some of the plastic scoops that they have there and paint them different colors. There's a lot of ways that you can really replicate this for your project. Um, I am going to use one scoop, one spoon, and then I'm going to use an assortment of the stickers for my cutting board there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of lay everything out, just kind of get an idea of how I want to do this. And for these great stickers, what's really cool about them is that they come on a clear sheet. And that really allows you to kind of lay these out and kind of figure out the best design for you, especially when you're using something like this that really has so many cool options. Now, if you have a Cricut, you could certainly redo something for or with your Cricut for this very, very easily. But if you don't have a Cricut, there's such a great assortment of stickers like this that you can find at Michael's, at Hobby Lobby, at Dollar Tree. There are really a lot of great, great options for you. For mine, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of cut out some of the groupings that I like. And uh, I'm literally going to just start using that clear sheet to my advantage and kind of doing a, um, a layout, honestly, of what I want those stickers to look like and kind of how I want the placement. Originally, I was thinking that sweater weather one would be really cute, but uh, it just didn't show up very well. I love this one that says family, and I think that that's going to be a perfect tie-in to what I want to do. So after I figured that out, I finally got them all stuck down and this is what it looked like. I wanted to leave some space there because we are gonna have these pieces kind of hanging down. Now I do need to drill a hole in these. So I'm gonna grab my Royal B drill. I'm also gonna grab a, a piece of scrap wood and I'm just gonna drill a hole directly through the center of those. Obviously be very careful, hold those appropriately. I took this copper paint from Arteza and I am going to paint my spoon that color. I loved this color, what I also loved about this color is that it's an outdoor color. So if I really wanted to put this like on a wreath form or something and have it outside on the front door, you could totally do that with these paints. But that art caddy really helps me keep everything together. And uh, I'm super happy that I found those. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just take this copper paint and I'm just going to paint this little spoon up trying not to uh, paint my fingers, but we know that's not going to happen. I'm going to definitely end up painting my fingers on this one. And uh, after I had the spoon all painted up with that sponge brush, I'm literally just kind of almost, almost using it in the style of antiquing wax, honestly. And uh, I know you're shocked to hear that because I love working with the antiquing wax so much. <laughs> but speaking of antiquing wax, for the larger scoop, I did grab my antiquing wax and I am just going to add a fairly heavy coat on this. I'm going lighter in some areas, heavier in some areas, and I'm doing that on purpose because I want this to kind of have a very weathered, very aged, kind of an antique look. So once I have everything covered with that antiquing wax then I took my cloth and I'm just going to start wiping away some of that excess stain and really kind of spreading it out over those thinner areas. I took my twine and I am going to go ahead and just tie together my little spoon, my scoop, and my cutting board and I'm doing this because I want this to kind of uh, have the effect of it being tied together without having the bulk of trying to get through there. So I went ahead and just kind of took my twine and and literally just fed it through there and then I took this little orange bow. Um, I had some Dollar Tree ribbon and I just made a very simple bow. I, you guys know I am uh, not a very good bow maker so uh, I tend to do these off camera <laughs> and uh, I am just going to glue it right on top of there and add it and I think that this is such a cute little accent. 
I think this could be an adorable ornament. Maybe you have a fall DIY tree or a great item for a tiered tray. I am so happy with the way that this turned out. For my next DIY, I'm going to be taking a cinnamon broom, one of these pre-tied bows that I picked up from Amazon, and then I have some floral picks and some mums from Dollar Tree. Now this bow, um, I've used this once before in another DIY, and uh, I absolutely love it, and it's great for all of my holiday colors. And so for the... Um, Sorry about the shaky camera there. But for the cinnamon broom, it's a little tall. So I'm going to actually cut it down once I figure out how to get this plastic off of here. Um, have you guys ever noticed how like sometimes the plastic or the glue used to hold something together that you buy at Dollar Tree or retail anywhere is sometimes stronger than the actual item itself. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. So for this broom, I am gonna hack off the top part of this. So I just grabbed this saw. This is actually a plumber saw. It's just like a little hand saw. I had a hand saw from Dollar Tree for a while. Um, it broke, so I need to replace it once my Dollar Tree has them again. But this little handsaw tends to work out pretty well for stuff. Um, it's really designed for metal, but it uh, works pretty good on the broom here. And uh, I am just going to go ahead and cut that down until I get it to a point that I could just kind of break it off. And then some of those uh, little fronds or um, kind of the cinnamon-y cinnamon, cinnamon smelling goodness that I'm just kind of trimming away there, um, I can actually use those and put those in a potpourri or something. Those stems that are left over from that piece that I cut off, though, I am actually going to use that for another project down the road. So uh, be on the lookout for those. Now, for the bottom of the broom, I am going to go ahead and just kind of spread this out. Um, I think I mentioned that I've got this broom at Michael's, but I have seen cinnamon brooms. They're definitely a lot smaller, but I have seen them at Dollar Tree before. And I also think that you could take a regular broom and just spray paint it. Spray paint it like a metallic and, you know, keep the, um, the, the broom part of the broom, the sweeper part of the broom as uh, natural as you can keep it, you know, from Dollar Tree. And I think you could easily recreate something very similar with this um, kind of idea in mind. Um, I was at Hobby Lobby with my sister and we saw something that was similar to this and we both were like, we can make that. So uh, that's what I'm doing now. So now that I've got this uh, broom all set up and the size that I want it to, I'm going to go ahead and just get my picks ready. I've got a couple here that are from Dollar Tree and then the flowers. I think they are mums. They are also from Dollar Tree. And uh, for these, I'm going to take my lineman pliers here. And I love this tool. Um, this is an elect, I think they're elect electrician lineman clips but what i love about them is you can do one or check this out you can do all of them all at one time with very very little effort um they're called lineman pliers and i do have them in a link below i think they're from home depot and then uh for the mums i'm just going to kind of push those leaves up i actually only end up using a couple mums because of the size of the ribbon and the bow that i'm going to be using and then also because i'm kind of keeping it uh simple-ish, uh, you're going to see that I really don't end up using nearly as many florals as I thought. Now, you could certainly change this up if you wanted to. You could take this, you could create flowers and leaves and everything all the way from the top of that broom all the way down. Um, for me, like I said, this broom was just going to be way too long and uh, it, it just wasn't something that I was going to be able to use at the um, given length that it came in. Now for the bow, I'm having a little bit of trouble getting this sucker tied on here, but I do end up just kind of uh, splitting the broom down the middle and then taking the twisty up through there. And then for the floral picks, all I'm going to do is just stick these in that broom. It's so good, so easy, and uh, it makes it really, really easy. This is a great DIY. Again, something that's super simple. I don't think that you have to, you know, I didn't even make the bow. I bought the bow on Amazon. You could certainly buy a bow at Michael's. And then you just kind of look at it and get a feel for it. And then obviously I'm going to have to fluff it up a little bit because it was laying uh, face down. But um, 
again, I'm just kind of going through, I'm playing with it, I'm looking at it, I'm kind of figuring out how I want the ribbon and everything to lay. And then I do end up going in and adding a couple more of the picks for the final project here, which is on my yellow door, which you know I love so much. And uh, I am so excited how fall decor is going to look on my door. I'm obsessed with this. I love the way this looks. It gets me excited for the fall season, even though it is now almost the end of August. Can you believe that? All right, my next project, I'm taking a Dollar Tree sign. One of these pumpkin ornaments, just one from this eight pack. And then I also have a placemat from Dollar Tree. This has a very cool kind of woven texture with that green and navy. You know that those are my favorite colors, so I'm going to definitely incorporate that. And then I found these beads very randomly at Walmart. They were like in the clearance department. They were 50 cents. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just prep my sign. You can use any kind of Dollar Tree sign that you want. This one happens to be one that is kind of a uh, pet-friendly one. And I love this, this because it has that kind of raised piece in the middle there. And I'm going to go ahead and just remove the, uh, the front uh, thing that was on there, this front sign. And then I'm going to remove any of the glue globs or anything from that little cardboard piece because I do want to keep that and uh, you can discard any of those pieces. Now, for the center of this, you have options. You could either try and peel it away like I'm doing here very unsuccessfully. You could certainly paint this if you wanted to, um, but I don't want to paint the wood. I want to keep the wood and I can't use the placemat to cover this because you can see through that placemat. So I am going to take a piece of white construction paper and I am literally just going to cut it down to the right size. I'm going to pull out my little cutter here that I picked up on Amazon and I'm going to cut it down to the proper size. That way I can just hide all of those very cute paw prints that are in the back there. And, uh, you know, go ahead and just measure out the inside and just cut out a square. And then for the actual uh, piece itself, I'm just going to quickly do some zigzaggies of some hot glue. This is Shorebinders hot glue. And then I just glued that white piece of paper directly down. And then for this placemat, this placemat is kind of great. Well, I guess I should uh, remove the tag first. But, um, a placemat's kind of great because it's almost the perfect width for the center of that box that I happen to grab. And because it has these kind of grid lines on it, it is very easy to cut this by hand without having to measure it or anything. You can manipulate it really, really easily, as you can see, and then you can bend it, and then you know exactly where you're supposed to cut it. So I was able to get this to fit inside of here really, really easily. And I think that using these placemats are probably going to be my new favorite thing. So once I went ahead and just kind of finished up this last piece of the placemat puzzle, then I am just going to, once again, add a little bit more hot glue. I kind of did it in the four corners. And then I also did it in the uh, center to have this kind of perfect hold that you see here. Now, because that is a mesh you know, the hot glue is going to seep through there some, so just be careful. It was a little warm in that one corner there. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and set that aside. I'm going to grab some paint from my Arteza Art Caddy again. I love this blue, and it's going to go with the blue that is in that placemat. And I'm just going to paint one of my pumpkins this great blue color from Arteza. And uh, once again, I just reached to my paint caddy grab the paint out, grab the brush out. I'm going to go ahead and just sponge this directly on here. I have a canvas down below just to kind of help keep my work surface very clean down there. And uh, all I'm doing is just very lightly going across my pumpkin. And then once I have that uh, kind of coated, I think I did this twice, I am then going to take out my heat gun and just kind of help speed up that drying process. That way I can finish this DIY for you guys. You may remember that little tiny square that I said you want to keep. I'm going to take that square now and I'm just going to glue it down in the center of my box right in the very similar area to probably where it was placed before. You're going to do this on top of your mat and then I'm going to take my pumpkin that is nice and blue. I'm going to add some glue. I'm a poet. I didn't know it. 
Did you catch that? Um, I added some glue onto that little square in the center there. And then I'm just gonna take my pumpkin and just press it down in the middle, making sure that it has a good, good grip. And then I'm going to hide that hole. I'm gonna go ahead and just touch up my paint too, just a little bit since it wasn't quite all the way dry when I did kind of push down the center there. So, um, you know, not a perfectionist here by any means sometimes. Um, and, you know, happy mistakes happen. So I took my green twine and just tied a very simple bow. And I am just going to glue this to the top area there, covering up that hole where you would uh, typically hang this ornament from. And uh, I'm gonna hold that into place for just a second and we are almost done. I'm really, really happy with the way this looks. I think this would be adorable just as is on a tiered tray. It would look so, so cute. But you may remember now that I do have those beads. So I want to take those beads and kind of create a hanger. Now I'm sure all of you have seen the beaded wooden signs that they do sell at Dollar Tree. And uh, they're super, super cute. This is definitely something that was inspired. I love the way that this green really pulls out the green on the inside of that uh, placemat. And um, originally I was going to go with all green, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and just alternate this. So I'm gonna take my twine and I'm gonna take out a fairly generous piece of twine, probably a little bit longer than I needed, but um, you'll kind of see why I end up doing that in just a second. Now, I'm gonna start stringing these. And if you ever run into problems with your beads where you can't string them, like this one here, the twine is not going all the way through. It's because usually the twine is, is frayed or there's something at the end that's causing it some, some grief. And what I will do is I will take out my heat gun or my glue gun rather, duh. And uh, I will add some glue onto the end of my twine and it really gives me a nice kind of a stiffer twine that I can then thread my beads through really, really easily like so. So when I have this all set and done, I'm going to tie off the ends of the beads um, just with a double knot just to make sure that those beads do stay in place. And then I will trim down the, um, the twine just a little bit. I did add a lot of hot glue kind of in that corner. And then I'm just using this piece of scrap cardboard just to make sure that that twine is really set down in that uh, kind of side uh, side crack. I don't know what that's called. And uh, here it is when it's all done. Again, I think this is super, super cute. I think it'd even be fun just to use that beaded garland with this on a tiered tray. I love it. We are going to be making a very easy table runner out of these burlap leaves from Dollar Tree. I grabbed one in each color and that was the perfect size for my table. You may need more or less depending on the size of yours. First, you're gonna go ahead and remove all of these wires. I went ahead and cut mine and then I realized after the fact that I could have just peeled them off. They're um, kind of glued down on top of the burlap leaves. So it's actually pretty easy to remove all of these by hand if you don't have one of these little cutting tools that I did pick up by the way in the crafter square section at Dollar Tree. And for the next part, we're gonna start gluing our leaves together. All I'm gonna do is take some hot glue and just start gluing the points of the leaves together. If you think about the way a table runner typically is, it's kind of down the center of your table. And then if you also think about the way leaves fall, they just kind of randomly fall sporadically. So what I'm doing is gluing some points together and then working my way down along the leaves and just kind of repeating that process, keeping in mind kind of that elongated or that long rectangle that I'm trying to create for the table runner. And once everything is dry, this is what it looks like. I absolutely love the way this looks. I saw a very similar one at Hobby Lobby for about $35. I recreated this for $5. Project number two was inspired by Jazz over at DIY Home and Crafts. I loved this wreath that she made with this wheat, so I wanted to make my own version of it. I grabbed some of the wheat bundles as well as one of these grapevine wreaths from Dollar Tree, and then I started cutting off those wheat bundles. The best way that I found to do this is to take your bundles and just kind of spread them out kind of like I'm doing here and then you can just take your lineman pliers or your cutters and just go right into the center and cut each one of those pieces off. I always keep my branches a little bit longer. I figure I can always cut them shorter versus making them longer. <laughs> 
Once you have all of your pieces cut, then you can just go ahead and start inserting them into the grapevine wreath kind of like so. The great thing about working with these is that these pieces really do fit nicely within the kind of the, the vines of the grapevine wreath itself. I really like working with these and there's not a lot of hot glue, almost no hot glue really is needed at all, unless you want some just to make sure you've got an extra good hold or maybe you've got a grapevine wreath that's maybe not as tight as this one is. These pieces are fitting in nicely here. And what I'm trying to do with this grapevine wreath is just make sure that I've got all of my yellow colors kind of on the left side and then all of my oranger colors on the right side. And then as I'm creating my wreath, you'll see the colors starting to fill in and then we'll join everything together in the middle with a nice bow. I'm also keeping some of that wreath showing, some of that grapevine wreath showing, because I do like that texture that I'm getting from there. Now for the bow itself, I'm gonna take some raffia and all I'm going to do is unbundle it and then loop it together in the form of a bow. Now, if you're working with raffia, you know that it can be a little challenging sometimes. And uh, what I'd like to do is just grab a great big handful of it wrap it around, make it into the bow shape that I want, and then just kind of trim away any of the excess. I'm not even worrying about the longer pieces of the bow right now. I'm just literally getting the shape of the bow set up now. And then once I had the shape that I liked, I went ahead and just wrapped a piece of raffia in the middle and then just hot glued it down just so it would stay in place. And then to create some ribbons coming off of my bow, I'm just going to take some raffia. I'm going to bundle it together. I'm going to hot glue it, trim it down a little bit, and then create two individual ribbons kind of like so. For placement, I went ahead and glued the ribbon part of my bow directly onto the grapevine wreath kind of like so. And then I glued the bow part right on top of that. And this is what it looks like when it's all done. I love this. I think it's so iconic to fall. I absolutely love those colors, and I'm not exactly sure which wreath I'm going to be able to hang on my door this year. And for my next project, we're going to use a Dollar Tree squeegee. We're also gonna take a wooden dowel rod. This is one of the larger ones from Dollar Tree, and also one of these over-the-door hangers. First thing I'm going to do is trim down my over-the-door hanger. We're actually going to cut this down to where we have four hooks. And you can use a pair of, um, I'm using my lineman pliers, and they just clamp right through or clamp, uh, cut right through that metal. And they're really, really easy to use. I actually like these a lot. And then we're going to take a wooden dowel rod, and you can see it's a little bit longer than the four. So we're just going to also trim that down with our lineman pliers here and um, just kind of get that to be the same size. Now we are going to glue everything together. Now, typically um, with this piece here, because you can't bend it and we want this to hang flat up against the door, we are going to uh, start gluing our rod down at the bottom here kind of like so. Rather than flipping this upside down, we're going to kind of keep it... Uh, upside right I guess is the right thing to say um, and then for our um, hot glue here you could certainly use e6000 hot glue is just easier to work with when I'm doing a quick project like this so if you want this to have a really good stronghold I recommend e6000 or even some super glue and then we're going to glue our dowel rod directly down to the bottom kind of like so and then we're going to add our metal hook piece as well. For that hook piece, what we're going to do is after that dowel rod has set, we're just going to make sure that that's good and solid. And then we're going to glue our metal piece right on the back, right on top of that dowel rod as well. Kind of like you see here. Once your glue has dried, you're going to go ahead and take this outside and spray paint it. I gave it two coats of my Rust-Oleum dark steel paint. After everything dried, I took this burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree and just wrapped a little bit around the center of the rake just to give it a little bit of an added detail. Using some of my fall flowers from Dollar Tree, I just created a simple floral spray binding together some of the wheat, some of the burlap sunflowers, and some of the fall leaves. I then took some of that burlap ribbon and created several circles with it and then just tied it off in the middle kind of like so and then I pinched it in the middle and tied everything together into a kind of a free-formed bow. Once I had everything tied down in the middle then I just simply glued it down to the center of my floral spray and used that excess ribbon to tie it onto my rake. 
And this is what it looks like when it's all done. This is what it looks like hanging inside on one of my interior doors in my house. It definitely is beautiful on the wood, but when I take it outside and put it up against that eggplant door outside, it really pops then. To me, this screams fall, and I love this so, so much. We are going to take some Dollar Tree raffia, also some twine or some cord. I happen to have this package on hand from Michael's. I also grabbed two of these packages of these wooden leaf ornaments. And then I have some wood beads. These are left over from a Michael's haul I did a while ago. You can use really any kind of wood beads that you might have on hand. So first we're going to take our leaves and we are going to paint them all, all 10 of them. And I'm using this orange, this gold paint, and then also this antiquing wax. So with the orange, I'm kind of being very sporadic with it, as you can see. And then I'm going to take a paper towel and we're just going to rub in that orange color. I don't care if I've got complete coverage. That's not what this is about. And uh, I am literally just going to once again take that orange paint, rub it up a little bit with my paper towel. And then I'm going to take some of the antiquing wax and apply it to my paper towel. And I love the variation of the orange and that gold of the wood. But then we're going to add our antiquing wax right on top of that. And you'll see that it starts to fill in some of those spots. And it really gives it a cool effect, almost like it's fall. And then we're going to take our gold paint. And this is an all-purpose or multi-surface paint that folk art makes. And it's a like a bling gold. I absolutely love it. And we're going to buff that and then it's going to create this really cool fall leaf effect. Once all of my leaves are done, then we're going to go ahead and start stringing them. I'm tying one leaf to my cord and then putting eight beads and then adding another leaf and creating my garland. Now, I ran out of beads, so my garland's not going to be quite as long as I would like it to. I would definitely be making a trip back to Michael's to get more of these beads because I absolutely loved the way this garland looked. So you'll simply tie two loops on the end of it so you have a strand of garland like so and you'll have it hanging on the fireplace before you know it. Look at the cool variations of those leaves. I love this technique. It is the perfect technique for fall leaves, and this is what it looks like on my mantle. I absolutely love this look. And for project number two, we're going to grab one of these wooden stars from Michael's. I grabbed mine on the clearance rack for 80% off. Also, I grabbed two bags of this vase filler from Dollar Tree. For my star, I'm going to be just flipping this over and using antiquing wax. We're going to be painting the backside as well as the sides of the star with the antiquing wax. I'm almost using this like paint. I'm going to put a nice thick cover of uh, the antiquing wax or the paint on the back of the star and also on the sides of the star. And then I'm going to be wiping it off with my paper towel to give a really cool, very rich surface. And then we're going to do the inside as well. For the outside edge of my star, I'm going to be using that folk art multi-surface gold paint again. And we're just going to be going around the edge of the star, making sure we have two great coatings of paint. Once the paint is dried, I'm going to go ahead and add a generous amount of hot glue in the bottom. And then very quickly add my vase filler down to that glue, making sure that everything is sticking and nice and solid. Then I'm just going to go through and add another layer of hot glue and just start literally building those layers of vase filler up all the way. This star did take exactly two packages of the vase filler, which was great. Once everything dried, I had this gorgeous DIY star that I absolutely love so much. It's a perfect complement on my bar. It's definitely a very modern farmhouse. It even has a cool kind of industrial vibe, which I'm definitely loving. And for my last project, I'm going to use a raffia bundle from Dollar Tree. Also some of this buffalo check ribbon I grabbed at Dollar Tree. And then some of these twig pieces from a previous Dollar Tree haul. For my scrap wood, I just have three pieces that are in varying sizes as you see here. And then I also grabbed some of these wood tumbling tower blocks. First, I took my three pieces of wood and I'm going to use some wood glue and actually just glue these together. I'm kind of overlapping them like you see here because I want to make sure that this gives it kind of a cool 3D look. I took everything outside and spray painted it with some white primer and then brought it inside and gave everything a single coat of my chalk paint 
from Rust-Oleum. Once everything was dry, I helped it along with my heat gun there. I did also paint my tumbling tower blocks. I painted all the blocks that were in that one package with this black chalk paint. That way I had plenty of blocks and I could use them all for this project. And I did end up using almost all of these blocks, by the way, for this project. Once everything was dry, I then started to glue my pieces on to spell out the word fall. I'm just adding some wood glue on the back of each piece with my paintbrush. That way I can control the amount of glue that goes on to each one. And I'm just spelling out the word fall using those tumbling tower blocks. And then I am going to go in and age my piece of wood, kind of like you see here. Then I went back through and after I rubbed everything in a little bit, I did add some additional chalk paint to make sure that it did not look totally brown and yucky. Once everything dried, I then glued my wood stems on top of each one of my wood blocks to kind of give them a little bit of a pumpkin effect, kind of an abstract pumpkin. For the stems, I wanted to create some little bow ties, so I'm taking my buffalo check ribbon, simply folding it in half, then I'm going to pinch it down the middle, holding that with my fingers, and then wrapping it with the raffia pieces, kind of like so. And then once I have everything wrapped around and I like the thickness of that center point, I'm just going to take a little bit of hot glue and simply just wrap it around there and glue it down on the back side. I wanted my bow ties to have more of a ribbon effect, so I'm going to take a piece of raffia and just simply wrap it around the twig itself, crisscross it in the middle, and then glue the bow tie directly on top. So when everything is done, you have a piece that looks like this. Super cute, isn't it? I love the way this looks. I think it's super fun for fall. It's very chic. Goodwill before and after is going to be this gold candle plate that I picked up when I was out shopping. It was $1.99 at my local Goodwill store, and I really loved it, but I did want to tone it down just a little bit. So I'm gonna add a little bit of orange paint, and I'm just gonna dry brush this. I'm using a perfect dry brush and I'm just spreading that orange paint out all the way around to the edges of that gold plate and you can see I really really spread it because you can barely see any of the orange and that's exactly what I wanted. Now I'm going in with my antiquing wax and I'm just going to kind of highlight those edges and get those corner pieces and those points all covered in that antiquing wax and I'm just going to continue to buff it all around. I will switch this out to a dry paper towel and keep kind of buffing it and rubbing it in and spreading it around like you're seeing now. And then eventually it's going to give me this gorgeous rust color that I love so, so much. I think this is absolutely perfect. And then it's time to start decorating. I'm adding some Dollar Tree floral pieces as well as some wood pieces that Candle is actually a old candle that I've had forever from Pier 1, and uh, I love it. It smells really, really good, and it goes perfectly with my fall color scheme that I'm doing here in this candle plate. And when it's all done, this is what it looks like on my coffee table. I absolutely love this. I think it screams fall, and it's the perfect color combination to my living room. This next before and after were these little wicker baskets I picked up. They were 99 cents each at the Goodwill store, and I thought that they were perfect. Kudos to my mom for finding them. And then I also had these wood pieces that were from Dollar Tree's Crafter Square, and I thought I could make the perfect sconces with these. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my wood pieces, and I'm just going to cover them with two coats of my chalk paint from Folk Art. I believe this color is called Sheepskin, and I love the way this goes on. After everything dried, I marked where I wanted my baskets to hang from with a pencil, and then I'm just drilling two small holes on either side of that pencil line so I can feed this wire through. You can use really any color wire, it's not going to show up. And I just snipped off a piece, fed it through the two holes, and then wired the basket to the wood backing, kind of like so. I added cork knobs to the bottom to make sure that the baskets hung straight. And then it's time to fill your baskets. I filled this up with some Buffalo Check fabric and then added some Dollar Tree sunflowers to it. Another option could be a candle, although I highly recommend that you use a battery operated pillar candle instead. Or you can add a mason jar or a small glass filled with water and fresh flowers. And this is what they look like hanging on the wall. I absolutely love the way these look. It's the perfect little farmhouse addition to my guest room. 
I loved this little rocking horse as soon as I saw it. It was $2.99, but I thought I could definitely make it into something different. So the first thing I did was remove its mane. Yes, I scalped it. And then I also removed its tail and ears and any other pieces that were just kind of hanging off of it until I had a very sad looking rocking horse kind of like this. I gave this little guy two coats of white chalk paint from Rust-Oleum and made sure that he was nice and clean and fresh for his makeover that was to come. I created a tail using some Dollar Tree rope that I just pulled apart into individual little strands. I added a piece of tape and put it right back where it belonged. And then for the mane, I took a solid piece of Dollar Tree's nautical rope and just added a generous amount of hot glue right to the top of his head and down his back and then just took that rope and glued it directly on top. Now, as you can see, I did leave a little longer piece in the front, and that is so I can kind of fray that out and also separate those pieces and give him a little bit of a faux hawk. Then took some of this buffalo check ribbon that I had from Dollar Tree. I simply just pinched it together and then inserted it in the hole where his previous ears were and created ears that looked like this. Look at this happy little guy. I forgot to film this part, but I just decorated him up with some flowers and some floral foam, and this is what he looks like when he's all done. And for my final DIY, I'm going to be using this candelabra that I got that was $6.99. Keep these suitcases in my fireplace during the summertime. So now that fall is almost here, it is almost fireplace season, so we are going to decorate the fireplace and get it ready for pre-fall. I'm going to use this one suitcase in the bottom of the fireplace and then I'm going to add that candelabra right there on top. I'm going to take some Dollar Tree garland and just start wrapping it around the candelabra. I'm calling it a candelabra. I don't know what it is. We'll call it candlesticks, candelabra, that candle thing. And then I'm going to take some of my floral sprays that I also picked up from Dollar Tree. These come in a variety of colors and a variety of shapes. There are some that have little pumpkins on them, some that have squash on them, some that have acorns, some that are just leaves, some that are berries. And I grabbed a collection of all of them. And then I also grabbed a couple extra pieces of the garland. So literally, as you can see, I'm just kind of wrapping it around and just making it look like that this candelabra is just kind of nestled in the middle of a pile of leaves. And then I'm gonna take some of those floral sprays and I'm gonna spread them out. And then I'm gonna stick them kind of underneath and then around some of the metal parts of the candelabra again, just making it look like that these leaves and twigs and vines are just literally growing all around that candelabra. And then the same here, putting it on the sides, just making sure it's nice and full looking and grabbing as much of those gorgeous fall colors as I can in there. I added three of these velvet pumpkins from Dollar Tree, six of these pillar candles. I didn't have any traditional taper candles, so I'm going to use these battery operated ones instead. I still love the way this looks. I think this is extraordinary. I love all of those colors. It is the perfect silhouette inside the fireplace, and it really makes me think about cooler weather and fall temperatures that are soon to come using these Dollar Tree twig pieces. I grabbed three sets. I've got one of this kind of short squatty one. I've got this longer skinnier one and then this kind of in-between size. Also, when I was at Michael's, I found this bundle of twine or cording that I absolutely loved. It's got these great five colors in it and I'm actually going to be using all five of these colors in my tassel garland thingy today. <laughs> The first thing I did was separate my wood pieces into three separate piles. And then for this next part, I grabbed my Ryobi drill and with a small drill bit, just drilled, well, tried to drill, through the center of those wood pieces, kind of like so. Obviously, you want to be very careful when you're doing this. Um, I had a drill bit that was pretty small and it actually worked out really good for these. I did drill through the center of most of my wood pieces and through the sides of some of them. And then I just started to string those wood pieces on my cord. I used that kind of uh, larger kind of chubbier one and then some of the longer skinnier ones and then some of the in-between pieces and just alternated them until I had all of those wood pieces strung on my string. I wanted to create a tassel at the end of my 
woodland garland. So I'm taking each color that's represented in this spool that you see here, and uh, I'm painfully trying to pull them off individually, and it's not working too well. But I did manage to finally get them off. Look at that rat's nest. And uh, did create a nice kind of color combo here that you see. And then anytime I'm doing a tassel, I always wrap it around a skewer and then just simply tie it off at the top and then tie it to the bottom of my woodland tassel kind of like so. And when it's all done, this is what it will look like. I ended up adding that blue leaf wood cut out to the base of it. But again, super, super happy with this one. Love the way it looks, love the way it turned out. And I think this is gonna be a staple in my home decor. And for my next project, we are going to grab a Dollar Tree pie pan, some buffalo check fabric, some Dollar Tree nautical rope, and some assorted florals from Dollar Tree. The first thing I did was take a piece of cardboard and just trace around my pie pan. I wasn't exactly sure what level I wanted this at, so I kind of did it larger thinking I could always cut it down smaller, which you saw me doing there. I did also take my pie pan and paint it with some black ink chalk paint from Waverly. That is my favorite chalk paint by far. Um, also, I took my cardboard cut out, that little half moon shape, and I did trace around it on my buffalo check fabric that you can see here. And then I kind of cut that half moon out very, very, very loosely and uh, just ended up taking Taking a little bit of hot glue, gluing that half moon cardboard back down on top of that buffalo check fabric. And then I literally just started to um, kind of snip it all the way around and glue those pieces down to that half moon. So I had a nice cutout. Before I did that, though, I did um, kind of reinforce my cardboard. I added a second piece just to make sure this was good and sturdy. I wanted it to hold and stay together. Then I added my bead of hot glue or my uh, dash of hot glue. I don't really know what that, my, my, my wiggle of hot glue. And then I just folded over that top there. And then I did end up snipping the edges around that kind of half circle. That way everything would fold over a little bit. And then I did another little uh, wiggle of glue and then just started folding those over like so. After everything dried, then I took my half circle and glued it back to the front side of my pie pan, kind of like so. I flipped it over and added a little bit of nautical rope on the back side. That way I could hang this up on the wall or my door. After everything dried, I started to decorate my pie pan. I did not have any floral foam. I keep forgetting to get floral foam like every time I go to Dollar Tree. But I did go ahead and take some hot glue and I just kind of squirted it down inside of that pie pan. I know this sounds ridiculous. And uh, as I'm adding my floral picks, they just kind of stuck. So it, it actually worked out really well for me. And after everything was done and dried, I thought that I needed just a little something extra. So I did go ahead and I added a raffia bow on the front, kind of like so. I don't know about you guys, but I love the way this looks. I don't think this looks like a pie pan at all. I think it's super, super cute. And I think it's a great way to welcome your guest into your home for this brand new fall season of 2020. And for my last project, we are going to use one of these grapevine wreaths that I picked up at Michael's. Also, I'm going to use some leftover pieces from my Christmas tree. And then uh, some of this Dollar Tree garland that I really like a lot. I also grabbed these ornaments from Michael's. I had some leftover burlap. I had some buffalo check ribbon that was left over. And I also had this garland that I picked up from the dollar spot last year. And I've been holding on to it. I may or may not use some of these twig pieces. I'm not really sure yet. So the first thing I'm doing is just taking that leftover burlap wrap that I had. And I'm literally just going to wrap it kind of loosely around the, um, the grapevine wreath. And then the great thing about working with these grapevine wreaths is that you really don't don't have to glue a whole lot of stuff. So I'm just going to kind of tuck some of the leftovers in there. I did trim it off a little bit as you can see and then I'm just going to tuck it into the grapevine and we're going to keep moving on. So then I took my ribbon from Dollar Tree. This is the buffalo check ribbon that I found and uh, I'm going to wrap it around and now I'm just going to take some of my green pieces, some of my uh, leftover Christmas tree pieces. And I'm just gonna start inserting them into the grapevine, kind of working my way around, 
What I love about this grapevine wreath, again, it's so easy. You don't really need a whole lot of hot glue. You can continue to work around. Now, surprise, the uh, pine cone garland is on there. This was impossible for me to film. So I apologize that I didn't uh, show you guys that, but it's, it's pine cones on a wire and I just wrapped it around. Now, these are brand new. I did actually find these in my stash and I forgot that I had bought these and I've been wanting to use those. So I'm going to use the larger horns instead. And then another switcheroo, I'm going to use that white garland from Dollar Tree instead of that burgundy one. I just decided also I'm not going to use these twig pieces. I think it's just too much. And I'm really, really loving the way that everything is looking. So now I'm just going to glue down those deer horns. And now you get to see this gorgeous wreath that I'm so, so happy with. I love the way this looks. I think it's super transitional. You could add some red sprays to it and a Christmas sign, and it would very, very easily be a great wreath for Christmas. It could be something that carries you through all the seasons starting right now. We are going to need some Dollar Tree florals. We're going to need a lot of Dollar Tree florals. We're also going to need one of these grapevine wreaths. You can add some ribbon if you want. I actually did not end up using it. One of these adorable scarecrow door hangers. And again, like I mentioned, lots of Dollar Tree florals. I used every bit that I could possibly find and, uh, and then some. I found these pumpkin sprays. I loved it all. So first I took some of my suede paint and I just literally just kind of used it like antiquing wax and just started to cover my grapevine wreath just to kind of age it a little bit. Once it was completely dry, I did go ahead and uh, chop up my scarecrow there uh, just so I could kind of make sure that everything would lay out properly and uh, kind of get a visual, if you will, of what I wanted to kind of create here. Then I put those pieces aside because I'm not going to be using them right away because I have this uh, tedious process of cutting apart all of these pieces of floral and uh, I just created several piles as you can see here and literally just started going at it between my glue gun and the actual grapevine wreath itself. It's pretty easy to decorate these. Um, the stems fit really nicely most of the time throughout that grapevine wreath and uh, I'm kind of going a little quick here because I am not an expert at wreaths by any means. I just kind of go with what I think looks good and I'm pretty happy with the way that this one is shaping up. Again, I'm just kind of filling in holes and creating this um, whole kind of wreath experience. For the legs and the head, I just simply wrapped a piece of twine around the grapevine and then just glued both pieces down to the bottom and the top. And when it was all done, this is what my little guy looked like hanging on the door. I thought it was super, super cute. I really love the way this looks. I think it's super festive and I think it's a great way to ring in the upcoming fall season. And for this next project, I'm going to be using one of these fall harvest trucks. I love these wood cutouts that they have this year from Dollar Tree. These are super, super cute. And then I also grabbed some of these wood pieces from Dollar Tree as well. First thing I'm going to do is actually remove the pumpkins from the truck. I know everyone is freaking out, but uh, it's going to be really, really cute. I'm using my tool from sliceproducts.com. I absolutely love that tool. And then I just simply removed the pumpkins. Once I had those pumpkins removed, I also removed this backing on the truck. Um, I, I don't know what this is technically called, so I'm just gonna call it the fence that holds everything in the back of the truck. And as you can see, it removed pretty easily. I took some antiquing wax and just covered that completely like so. And then through the magic of television, my truck is now red because I'm a bonehead and I forgot to film this part. So I am going to paint the wheels and the hubcaps of my truck. So I'm gonna paint the wheels black. And then I'm gonna go through with some kind of silvery gray chalk paint and just paint those center hubcaps. I think all of us are really good at painting. Some of you are much better at painting than I am. So I'm not gonna show you this whole entire process. You'll just again see it being done here shortly. So for the back of the truck, I am gonna go ahead and just glue this on the um, 
on the back of the truck. And uh, I'm going to do it a little bit higher than normal. And look at that. All of a sudden, those hubcaps are painted. And uh, this little piece here, this little cutout for the truck, I'm actually going to cover that up with a piece of painted cardboard. Now, the back of the pickup truck, I am going to glue um, some of these wood blocks on the back of my form here because I need something to help hold those wood pieces in the back of the truck. So hopefully that makes sense. And so this is what it looks like now. And as you can see, I'm literally just going to start adding some hot glue onto those wood pieces and gluing them in the back of the truck. And uh, when you have that little elevated piece, remember I did not stick it directly down on top of the red paint, you can kind of see now what's in the back of the truck, which I think is super, super cute. You can see how I've glued a couple long wood pieces right there along the base, and then I'm simply just going to take my other pieces and glue them together until you get something like this super cute right i love it already but i wanted to also create a sign for firewood that uh, this little truck is delivering to all of the crafters around the world and uh, i am just going to take some of these great dollar tree letters and an oversized popsicle stick and i'm just spelling out the word firewood whoa don't know what just happened with that crazy camera jump i did trim down the edges of my sign and then again i'm just going to take some antiquing wax go right over top of those letters kind of like so and then we're going to dry that off and when we do dry it off i did use my heat gun for that um, i dabbed away also some of the excess because you know i love to over glue and i love some over excess but uh, as you can see, I'm just kind of wiping it away. And then once it's dry, you will go through and actually peel those letters off of there. And when you do, it kind of creates this really cool effect that I am just digging so much. I glued it to the side of my truck and again, super obsessed with it. And this is what it looks like on my bar. Absolutely love this. Think it is super, super adorable and uh, very happy with it. And for my last project, I'm going to be using two of these Dollar Tree slingshots. You can find these in the summer section at your local Dollar Tree. It's probably the section that is slowly turning into fall. I also grabbed one of these scrap pieces of wood that I had left over from a previous project. If you don't have a piece of scrap wood and you can find one of these signs from Dollar Tree, that will work also. And then I did take a Jenga block or a wood piece and just break it in half. Then I took my slingshots out of the packaging and I'm going to remove the elastic strap, the ball, and the little cradle thing that comes with the ball. You're not going to need those. And then I just took one of my saws and literally just cut this directly in half, kind of right where that stem meets that curved part. Um, if you have a blade that is super sharp, that is ideal. You'll have two pieces that look like this. I think that this is already shaping up to be something fun. I took my mouse sander from Ryobi and just uh, sanded down my board just so it wasn't so rough and it would actually take paint a lot better. Then uh, I did stain my board with the antiquing wax from Waverly. I love the antiquing wax and for this one it was actually the very last drop literally of antiquing wax that I had. So then I took my Jenga wood pieces. Oh, and uh, by the way, I did paint my uh, stands blue there, but uh, I did take my Jenga wood pieces and glued them down at the end of each board. And then I added a very generous amount of hot glue and glued those legs down to either side of the board, kind of like you see me doing here. These were pretty easy and they held really well. And this is what it looks like when it's all done. It is the cutest little candle riser or decor riser or a candle decor riser. You could certainly just put succulents and twigs and rocks on it or even some candles. All right, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this compilation of all of my fall DIY projects. I look forward to bringing you many, many more fall and Halloween and Christmas DIYs very, very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.